This is episode 2 of Swift by Sundell Swift Clips, a brand new series of shorter videos about Swift tips and techniques. On this episode, we'll take a look at dispatch queues and how they can be used to write asynchronous and concurrent code in Swift. Like the name implies, a dispatch queue provides a queue-based abstraction for writing concurrent code. Queues can be either serial or concurrent, and they can perform their work both synchronously and asynchronously. An application can use multiple queues to perform its work, but it also always has a main queue, which represents its main thread. And that main queue is especially important for UI-based apps, since most updates that we make when using frameworks like AppKit, UIKit, and SwiftUI can only be performed on that main queue. To get access to that main queue, we use dispatchQueue.main. We can also ask the system to return a global system queue by using the static global method on dispatch queue. We can also create completely custom queues as well by giving them a label. When naming our queues, Apple recommends that we use this reverse DNS naming style in order to make it easier to debug and identify queues in things like crash reports. We can also specify a quality of service when we create a queue. Here, for example, we're giving our new queue the background quality of service, which tells the system how to prioritize the work that that queue will perform. Finally, we can also create concurrent queues using the concurrent attribute. Concurrent queues can perform multiple operations in parallel, which can be really useful for truly multi-threaded code. There are of course many different ways to use dispatch queues, but one really common use case is to move a somewhat heavy operation away from the main queue as to not block the UI and the user. Let's take a look at an example of doing just that. Here we're extending the data type with a new method, which will let us decode that data as JSON and then run a completion handler once that decoding process has been completed. To do that in a way that doesn't block the main queue, we're going to create a custom queue that we're going to perform that work on. We'll also create a JSON decoder as well. We'll then ask that queue to perform a closure asynchronously, which will let us perform that work without having the main queue wait for us. Within that closure, we'll then decode our data into our object and then call our completion handler. Now this code is fine, but there's one thing to keep in mind here. Since we're calling our handler within our asynchronous closure, that handler's code will also be executed on our new internal queue, which might be unexpected and could end up causing issues in situations like this, in which we're using our new decoded method from within our UI code. In this case, we're calling it from within a message view controller in order to decode a message. And within our completion handler, we then perform UI updates, such as showing a message view in case we had a successful result, or showing an error view in case an error occurred. Now, if we try to run this code, Xcode will actually show us an error. It will tell us that the updates that we're trying to perform, for example, if we're trying to set the text property of a UI label, can only be performed from the main thread, which is a really useful error to get during development. In order to get these errors, make sure that you've enabled the main thread checker within your app's Xcode scheme. So how can we fix this problem? Well, there are a number of ways. Let's go back to our decoded method from before. One way to solve this problem would be to always execute the completion handler on the app's main queue, like this. Now that's a fine solution for UI code specifically, but it might not be what we want if we're writing a series of asynchronous operations that are all chained together. After all, this jump over to the main queue is not required for thread safe code, it's only required for UI code and other code that is not thread safe. So how can we solve this in a slightly more flexible way? Well, what we could do is that we could instead parameterize this queue. That will enable us to pass in any queue that we want our completion handler to be called on, but we'll still default to the main queue so that our new decoded method will still remain easy to use from within our UI code. We'll then update our call to our completion handler so that it's no longer hard-coded to the main queue and instead uses the result queue that was injected. Finally, let's take a look at work items, which provide a way to submit work onto a dispatch queue, which can later be canceled. For example, here we're building a search results loader, which we want to debounce. That is, we want to wait for a certain interval before actually performing our network request when asked to perform a search. To do that, we've given this search results loader two properties, a debounce time interval, as well as a reference to a pending request work item. 
Then, the first thing that we're going to do when performing a new search is to cancel any previously pending request work item so that it won't be performed. We're then going to wrap our code that actually performs our network request inside of a dispatch work item, which will enable us to both delay that code and then also cancel it in case we need to. We're then going to use dispatch queues async after API, which enables us to perform that work item after our debounce interval. And that way, if a new search request comes in before we've kicked off the previous one, that previous one will be canceled, leading to fewer requests and that our app consumes less data. That's a few ways of using dispatch queues in Swift. You can find all of the sample code from this video at swiftbysundell.com slash clips slash two. Thanks so much for watching.